If you were to guess which industry creates the most millionaires, would you assume maybe energy or technology? Well, surprisingly, it's actually financial services and insurance. But when you consider the fact that these are our products and services that literally everybody uses, and there's not even a physical product involved, it starts to make a lot of sense how a business in this industry can have incredibly high profit margins and can also be very scalable as well. And that's part of what motivated me to go ahead and become an insurance broker earlier this year. Since then, I've gotten contracted with over 13 different carriers, such as Mutual of Omaha, Aetna, and AIG, just to name a few. So in this video, I'm gonna go over everything you need to know to become an insurance broker yourself, including the difference between an agent and a broker, as well as some of the startup costs associated with becoming a broker, um, as well as the licensing process, because you do actually need to get licensed before you can start selling insurance. And lastly, we'll look at how you can go about finding a good IMO to work with, because that's going to affect a lot of things, uh, such as your compensation. And if you don't already know what an IMO is, don't worry, we'll get to that here in a second. My name is Connor, by the way, and in my next video, I'm gonna go over exactly how I was able to pass my life insurance exam after only studying for three days, as well as what my experience has been like so far as an insurance broker. So uh, if you wanna see those, go ahead and subscribe. Now, as far as the difference between an agent and a broker, an agent is somebody like Jake from State Farm. He's an employee of State Farm, and he can essentially only sell the products and the policies that are offered by State Farm. Whereas a broker, um, a broker is contracted with several different insurance companies. So for example, maybe you could be contracted with both State Farm and Allstate. As a broker, you're kind of like Expedia. You're able to shop around for your clients and go out and find them the best deal. Another great advantage to being a broker instead of just an agent is if one of your clients were to get denied uh, for let's say life insurance because they have a pre-existing condition like diabetes or cancer, you can always help them go and apply at other companies until you do find one that approves them. And I've worked with a lot of clients who really do appreciate this because maybe in the past they've applied for coverage with a captive agent and they didn't exactly realize it. And whenever they did get denied, they just kind of assumed because of their conditions, no company would approve them. Um, but then you let them know that y'all can go apply at several different companies. And when you finally do get them approved, they're always extremely thankful. Agents are typically W-2 employees, whereas brokers tend to be 1099 independent contractors. And if you know anything about the difference between those two, you would know that they both have their pros and cons. For example, W-2 employees usually have all the benefits like paid time off and health insurance, whereas the independent contractors, they don't get the benefits, uh, but their compensation, whether it be hourly or commission, is usually twice as high than that of a W-2 employee. Compared to just about every other type of business out there, the money that you'll have to spend in order to become an insurance broker is incredibly low. With just a few hundred dollars, you'll essentially be able to get everything you need to get started. And depending on the company or the IMO that you decide to work with, they might actually cover all these expenses for you. So the first expense is gonna be for your studying and your training material in order to pass your insurance exam. And I used Excel Solutions for my study material. They have a program that's only around a few hundred dollars. And once you're prepared for your exam, um, you go ahead and get that scheduled. Here in Texas, we we're able to take it online with a company called Pearson View. It's an online proctoring service, and the exam fee with them was only around 30 bucks. And once you pass your exam, you have to go and get fingerprinted. That was around 40 bucks. And once you have that done, then you can actually apply for your insurance license. And here in Texas, it was around 50 bucks uh, to actually apply for the license. Once you're approved, uh, the last thing you'll need is ENO insurance. That stands for errors and omissions. And what that is, is it protects you if you were to make some kind of a mistake while writing a policy. Um, it really kind of protects you if a client were to come back and sue you for whatever reason. It's extremely rare, but it is definitely something that you are gonna need. 
And the last expense that you might come across as you're getting started is for leads. Now, depending on the company that you're working with, they might supply the leads for you, but as an independent broker, it's likely you're gonna to have to go out and purchase leads on your own. It's either that or you have to go sell to your friends and family. And leads can cost anywhere from a few hundred dollars to several thousands of dollars, uh, depending on the quality and the quantity that you wanna start with. Once you pass your exam and you get fingerprinted, the next step is to actually go ahead and apply for your insurance license. Here in Texas, we are able to do that online and that's actually the case with most states as well. You just need to go to your Department of Insurance website and submit your application there. They got back to me within just a few days, letting me know that my application was approved and that I could actually go ahead and print out the license. As an independent broker, you're only gonna be able to sell insurance to residents in the states in which you're licensed. And that's why most brokers over time will look at getting licensed in many different states. I've actually met several people who have 50 different licenses, one for each and every state. And the reason for that, or I mean, there's multiple reasons, but the biggest reason is usually uh, just to have consistent lead flow. Uh, because depending on your geographic location, and the lead vendor that you're using, there may be times where there are no fresh leads available in your actual geographic location. So you'll have to look at purchasing and working leads in other states if you wanna stay consistent with your business. The second reason why you might wanna have more than one license is if you're doing telesales and you wanna be able to work prime time across multiple time zones. Uh, this has been a huge advantage to me whenever I got into telesales because as we all know, there are certain hours of the day where it's much easier to reach somebody over the phone. Typically between the hours of 5 to 9 p.m. I know those hours are debatable, but um, the point is, is that whenever you have access to multiple time zones, it increases uh, that window of opportunity um, into many more hours. So for example, I have a license on the East Coast, Central Time, uh, Mountain Time, and Pacific Time. And as the day goes on, I just slowly switch over to the next time zone. Um, that way I'm always giving myself the best opportunity to reach somebody over the phone. Once you get licensed in your home state, it becomes incredibly easy to apply for licenses in other states as well. All you have to do is go to the National Insurance Producer Registry website and apply for your new license there. Uh, you'll just have to provide your current license number answer a couple of questions and pay a small fee, which is usually around $50, although that can vary. And they usually get back to you within a couple of days, letting you know if your application was approved or not. Now, as far as finding an IMO, this is definitely one of the most important decisions that you'll make as you're becoming an insurance broker. The IMO that you decide to partner with will affect a lot of things, including your compensation, just to name one. So IMO stands for Insurance Marketing Organization. And generally speaking, it's just a middleman between you and the actual insurance carrier. And just about all of the major carriers uh, do require you to go through a IMO instead of contracting with them directly. But that's not always the case. Uh, for example, whenever I got into Medicare, the IMO that I was currently partnered with, um, they weren't involved with Medicare at the time. And I was actually able to contract directly with some of the Medicare providers, such as Humana and United Healthcare. I think it's safe to say that there's no such thing as a perfect company to work for. And the same is true for an IMO as well. They all have their ups and their downs, their pros and their cons. But at the end of the day, a few things that I would recommend to look for as you're finding an IMO to partner with is their compensation plan. And if they have training, support, and mentorship to help you along the way, because you know, it really doesn't matter what your comp plan is like if you don't have the training and the support to help you actually go out there and sell some policies. So generally speaking, um, most IMOs will offer compensation between 90 and 150%. And you can definitely find an IMO that will start you off um, between 100 and 115%. If you're not already familiar with how compensation works, um, let's say for example, uh, you're selling life insurance and you're at a 100% compensation and you sell a policy with a $100 per month um, premium, which would be $1,200 annually. And at a 100% compensation, that would mean that your commission for that sale would be $1,200.
So I know that was all a brief overview, uh, but if you have any questions about anything, just drop in the comments and I'm always happy to help. If you have a good IMO that you're working with that you would recommend, drop that in the comments as well, uh, especially if they're recruiting, which I'm sure they are. Um, that way other people um, will have an idea of maybe where they could start out. And if you got any value out of the video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you wanna see how I passed my life insurance exam after studying for only three days, that's gonna be one of my upcoming videos. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and subscribe. And that's all for now. I hope you all have a great day.